Hello, it's another time out on the program Truth to Power. Truth to Power, like you know, is a program where we focus on happenings in and around persecuted communities in Nigeria. Today on the program, we shall be looking at the plight of persons in undocumented IDP camps. When we talk about IDP in Nigeria, we are talking about internally displaced persons. Kaduna State, not too long ago, was a hotbed for conflict and crisis, and most of them had religious or tribal tones to eat. While some people claim that it's bandits that are coming to communities to attack or quit them, some other persons say that these are terrorists only riding on horsebacks. And on the program today, I have someone that together we shall be looking at an undocumented IDP camp in Kaduna State and uh, how life has been, how it came to be, and of course, what are the forms of interventions that's been happening in this particular IDP camp. With me on the program today, I have Blessing Echo Sunday. She is the CEO of uh, Echo Smile Support and Empowerment Initiative. Blessing, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, uh, tell us about Blessing. Wow. Well, um... My name is Blessing Echo Sunday. I'm a social entrepreneur and the founder of Echo Smile Support and Empowerment Initiative, a non-governmental organization that is out to transmit smile to the Dan children. And that is why our motto is transmitting smiles to the Dan children. Yes, it's a non-governmental organization that we're out to look out for people who need help, who need to be loved. And that is why we're here. And I'm someone that is so passionate about the less privileged. Like I normally tell people, as you're smiling, also be a smile to others. That is the kind of person I am. Yes. All right. You heard her. We've introduced her. Now, I'm talking about uh, internally displaced persons in Kaduna State. Some years back, the Kaduna State government officially shut down all of the IDP camps in the state and uh, as far as they are concerned, as we speak now, they believe that no IDP camp exists in Kaduna State. That's the government position. But what's the reality on ground? We know that when the government shut down these IDP camps, it wasn't as if there was a program to resettle them in their homes or communities or a government um, program that will cater to all of their needs. But rather, these persons that were displaced in different camps that were scattered across the state just melted into the communities where they found themselves. And in the course of all of that, we know the kind of humanitarian crisis that happened as a result of that. Because first, many of these communities were not prepared to take this volume of persons into them. Facilities and infrastructures were not in place to cater to the needs of these persons that have been displaced. And um, it is at that point that a particular community between Kachia and Kajuru if you if you're familiar with the map of Kaduna State, which we are going to show you, Kachia and Kajuru, these are local government or uh, precincts in Kaduna State where most of this and uh, many of these crises happened. A camp was discovered by uh, Blessing, and that was how we became aware that indeed there was something like this happening, and uh, she intervened. Now. Uh, how did you come to discover these um, internally displaced persons? Because since officially government say we cannot call them a camp, let's say internally displaced persons cluster. Let's use the word cluster. cluster yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, sometimes last year, around May, that was 2022, I was in, because I was in Abuja then, and then I was sick, I came to Kaduna for treatment when my parents uh, so. I was in the house and then I saw this woman looking so unkept and then she came that please that she needs food. If you look at her, by men looking at the woman, you know that yes, all is not okay with her. And then I told her, I said, Madam, please, I'm very sick at the moment and truth be told, I don't have anything to do to give to you now, but I promise you I'm going to come to look for you. She now told me where they were living, that's then. So I told her, I asked her for a phone number, of course, you know, she's a displaced person, no evil for talk more of a uh, phone. So I said, no problem, madam, I promise you, I'm going to come. 
So earlier this year, that was on the 26th of April to be precise. Let me just say the way it is. The Spirit of God just made me start to me. Remember you made a promise that you're going to look for such a so person. And then I kept on asking people, do you know where these people are? Everybody tells me, no, 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 no. But then I was directed by the Spirit of God and then I left my house. I just went to the community. Please, do you know this place? Do you know these people? Do you know these people? Lucky for me, I met a man. And then he said, please, let me take you to the Saruki. That was the chief, the head, the district head there. Mm -hmm. And then the person took me to him. And then the man was happy. I introduced myself. And then he called the, the KIDP coordinator. And then that was how I, I got to know those people. And then I told them, okay, I'm coming for now. I'm a young person. If you look at me, I don't have what it takes for me to take care of you. But I'm going to use the power of social media and then some individuals that I know that can help me. And so immediately I took my phone. I did a short video there with the IDP coordinators. I said, please, can you just tell me some of those things you people are facing here? So, and that was how that place was discovered. And then on the 2nd of May, which was my birthday, 2nd of May, this year, 2023, and then I called my friend. I called my friends, and we organized a get together for them, just a form of celebration, just to revive their spirits. And then we did some medical checkups for them, gave them some drugs, gave them some clothes, and food. so it was just a celebration. And then we talked to them just. And then since then, I've been going there for different activities. Still, date I'm still with them. Hmm. So that was how she discovered this cluster of internally displaced persons. And um, I know that uh, at some point in time, during when the media picked up this issue, it I uh, became aware of it and we tried to do some things then. And since then, I know you've been doing stuff. And uh, also fall following up on some of the things that you have done, can you give us in detail some of the other things you've done, what's remaining and what we still need to do? Yeah, we we did a um, medical checkup for them and then we gave them some drugs because most of them, as of when we met them, their quite, conditions were quite pathetic. So in my own little way, with the help of my family members and then my friends, we were able to come up with something. So we did uh, a free medical checkup for them and then I was able to get some clothes for my friends like that and then we gave them clothes, we even food stopped. So. Uh, we were able to give them some uh, food stuff and we started a program because uh, we felt okay some of these kids compared to if, if you if you for instance if you pick a child that is in primary school there that's the my, my my kids that's the idp kids now compared with to a child that is in the, uh, the other know, society yes you know they are as good as people that have never been to school so and this is number one these are people from the village, remote villages that we know. So what we did was, okay, with my friends, we're like, okay, let's start something for them. class. So we, we came up with a program, we target back to class. Okay. Yes. Now, the whole essence of it is for us to see how we're going to promote a free quality education for the displaced child, orphans, and any vulnerable child within the community. It's a whole lot of projects that, truth be told, is really not easy. We're just baby in the system. We don't have what it takes. So it's really not easy even for us to get volunteers, teachers. It's, we're not getting any support. Wait, before we go into talking about that, can you give us an idea of the number of adults that are there, the kids that are there, and uh, the demography, male, female, of course, orphans, widow do you have a rough idea if it's not too specific just a rough we have idea. over four thousand idps there wow yes 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 and the children they are over thousands we have so many of them sometimes when we talk a lot of persons felt peculiar it's not really true something like this is not but we have pictures not even pictures if you want to see these people they are there okay what's going to happen is that um, <laughs> i'm sure some of the pictures that you're seeing now are pictures from our idp camp on the screen as you watch the program now there are pictures from the idp camp all right now you talked about the back to school project yeah i wanted to expatiate on that okay uh what, we, what, what we're currently doing is just um promoting um free education for the kids 
Okay. Yeah, so what we did was we had to collapse okay them into three classes. Now, one, two, what a class, three, four, I don't know whether you understand. Yeah. Another class, five, six, and then the ones in senior secondaries like that. So we have currently we have three classes. Okay, to put it in proper perspectives for those that don't understand the Nigerian education system. Now, when we're talking about primary one, we are talking about grade one and grade, grade two. two. They are in one class. Yes. Grade three and grade four, they are clustered in one class and grade five and six. Yes. And even those that are in grade seven, eight and nine, like the junior secondary school. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. That, that, that's it. Thank you very much for that explanation. So what, what we're currently doing, we because the school is actually on during the vacation, the classes was from Monday to Thursday. And then Friday was like a fun time for the children. We go out, we okay. play, do some sporting activities for them. You know, children love, they yeah, love sports. Yeah, yeah. And just to make them happy. So from Monday to um, Friday, Thursday, the class is from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. So that's what we're doing. Okay. And then because now school is in section, it's going to be Saturdays only, 9 a.m. Because we don't have our own facility. Okay. We're making use of, um, of the, the public school. Yeah, the, public the, school. the primary school belonging to the local government area. Yes. That's the yes. principal. Okay. Yes, mm. yes, yes. So that's where we're currently. So because we don't have our own facility, so of course we have to do with what we have. So we're making use of the public school there, the government's public school there. So that is where we're currently running for the kids. Yes. And now that school is in session, it's going to be just on Saturdays that um, the, the kids in the IDP camp would have the opportunity of getting to do some formal education, getting some formal education. And we believe that with the government and also good-spirited persons here in all of this, there will be some intervention, don't you? I uh, have uh, people in the communities that want to volunteer their structures of building or don't we have structures that can possibly be used for this purpose? So the only safest place for now is that public, public school. The, the public school okay, there. okay, because, because of the security challenges even you. in that yes, environment. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. because what we're doing, you know, because of this, those children are vulnerable, like you know. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we don't want a place where we'll be far from because there's a group of uh, the vigilante group there and they are aware of what we're doing. Okay. Even there are some security agencies that are aware of what we're doing. So, um, once in a while, they have to like check around to ensure the safety of the kids. So, because we cannot just take these kids out there. Mm -hmm. So, like you that. don't come and be the one to, I will gather Thank them for you. some people with uh, some Thank other this now. When she's talking about the vigilante, the Nigerian contest, we call them the vigilante, but they are actually community guard or community watch. Yes, That's what they yes. call them elsewhere. But in Nigeria, the name we use for community guard is vigilante. All right. And yes, that's for that, for the education. Now, for the teaching and uh, the learning materials, how do you people get them? <laughs> um, it's quite challenging. We don't have the materials. When we did the flag off of the program, we expected a lot of support from the organizations we invited. But I'm sure maybe they are just sitting watching and see if really um, it's something they should key into. Okay. So of course, me, I'm a very resilient person. Once I make up my mind that I want to do something, I do it. So I don't want a situation whereby I have to wait for anybody. So the little resources we have, we have to use it and get some books, of which is not enough. Some of the kids come to the class, they don't even have books. Wow. Yes. Wow. Writing materials, they don't have. Hmm. That's it. <laughs> when there are a lot of things these kids need. All right. <laughs> You're watching and listening to the program Truth to Power. And uh, on the program today, we have uh, Blessing Echo Sunday. She is the CEO of Echo Smiles Support and Empowerment Initiative. And she discovered a cluster of internally displaced persons in Kaduna State, uh, Middle Belt, Nigeria, and geographically or geopolitically categorized as the northwest of Nigeria. And uh, it's actually, is it Kachia or Kajuru local government now, that particular community? It's, it's somewhere between Kajuru and Kajuru. Kajuru. <laughs> okay, Kajuru. 
local government area that schedule of Princeton in Kaduna State, uh, Northwest Nigeria. All right. Now, from the need to prove, to get some study materials for the kids in these IDP camps, the resource persons as the teachers that you have there, how do you get to pay them, or what's the arrangement between you and the teachers? <laughs> So the teachers, they're actually volunteers. Okay. I just, I also teach them. <laughs> so I'm also one of the teachers. And then I have the other persons who volunteer. And then from the lead to, I have, of course, I, I, I made them to understand and they know that this thing is self-funded. Mm -hmm. It's self-funded. It's not like I have a sponsor somewhere or no. It's self-funded. So I made them to understand that please just help me let's do this and god has been very faithful they are nice people these are people that these are people that are really they have passion for the less privileged just like me so i just pleaded with them the little stipends i have which is nothing just because of the transport you know yeah, how yeah. the country is now i have so the little i have i said okay please let's just manage this just for transport but it's not like of course i can't pay them now because i don't even have it uh, so that's just it if most of them have to even trek distance for them to get to the venue which of course we know is not easy but because they are good people and they are willing to help these kids and so first when we wanted to start, when we were about starting this program, we wrote letters. We wrote letters mm -hmm. to different organizations. And honestly, on the day of events, so many came and said so many things. Like, yes, yeah, it's a very good initiative. We're willing to be. But till date, I've not heard anything. <laughs> Sadly, that's a society that we live in today. People come to chase clouds make announcements, make promises that probably they were ready to fulfill, but because of the situation, they couldn't or whatever. But the most important thing is that you've had it now. There is an undocumented cluster of internally displaced persons in Kajuru local government area. That's a principle in Kaduna State, Northwest Nigeria. And uh, she has been doing her own beat to see how she'll be able to help these persons. Now, these persons, these kids, are in this cluster not because they want to be there, mm -hmm. but because unfortunately there are security situations that forced their parents away from the, the place where they initially are. Some of them, I will tell you, have lost their parents. Some of them are orphans, taken care of by just persons in the community. And all of this boils down to the fact that um, some level of persecution is happening and either nobody is doing anything or those that should do what they should do are not doing enough and that's the situation that we found ourselves so this is a call out to the government and to every person in and around the world good spirited persons to see how they can put a smile on the faces of all of these persons and it boils down true to the fact that even you as you go about your daily activities you should remember that they are underprivileged persons they are persons that need your help and support and do that which you can do for them coming back to the program before we wrap up i'd like us to talk be a bit about the medical outreach and how you are able to mobilize to do that medical outreach okay um one of my team member She's a very good person. So when I saw those people, that's the IDP, I spoke to her, I pleaded with her, I don't have the money to pay you, but please, can you just help me in your own little way? And honestly, she has been very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes, she has been very helpful, but it is not enough. Like I was discussing with um, one of the volunteers, teachers, I'm more concerned about these kids. It's not like I'm not concerned about the others, but their own story, you know, because these are some of some of these kids watch their parents being butchered. Hmm. If you listen to their stories, I'm telling you, you start crying. But we don't even want to go there. Now, I was telling one of my volunteer teachers, did you, if you see some of them, they are scared. These are kids that need proper medical attention. Then we're not talking about the parents as well. We've written to some organizations to help us with the medical, so that we can do a detailed medical checkup for them. So that's more than anything. I think, I, I think um, a lot of persons out there, 
feel maybe um, it is not their business. But then it's everybody's business. business. Yeah. Yes. Really, it is everybody's business because I often tell people that no matter how much you try to cater to the needs of your family, your kids, yeah. if someone else's child is not adequately taken care of, they will grow up to be a problem to that child that you feel that you have adequately uh, catered for. So in the course of even taking care of yours, look out and look around and take care of the kids of others so that we, they can all grow up to form a society that we'd all be proud of in the future. All right, before we wrap up yes. the program today, I'd like you to give us your parting word and that message that you want to tell to whoever is watching or listening to this podcast. Okay, um, I really want to thank so thank you so much for giving us this opportunity because truth be told there are other media houses out there but because you saw what we're doing right from the beginning you've always been supportive your station has always been supportive and i want to use this opportunity to say thank you so very much and i still also want to talk to people out there um it is not just something that one an individual can do it a low or an organization because it is for everybody and like i normally say be the handkerchief to wipe someone's tears. And we're in this together. Nigeria, I love my country, Nigeria. I'm not even from Kaduna State. I'm even from Benue. Mm. Yes, I'm not even from Kaduna. So that's it. But because we are one Nigeria, and because we're all created by one God, of course, we need to look out for each other. So please, I want to make an appeal to everyone else there. Please, support us in this vision. It is not just for the only IDP in Kudansa that we're concerned about. We're going round other IDPs too. We're going around to see what is happening there, especially the back to class program, because we really want these kids to have proper education. So thank you very much. And I'm sure you're going to support us. Thank you. All right. That's about the size of the program today. And I'll tell you, uh, like always, that um, you should make out time to watch or listen to Truth to Power. And while you're doing that, don't forget that Truth to Power is proudly supported by Truth Nigeria. Truth Nigeria is a media website that is designed to tell the true story about Nigeria. And Truth to Power, we are set up to tell the true stories about the persecuted minority com communities in Nigeria. Until next time, when we'll be on with another package of the podcast Truth to Power. Remember that when you put a smile on the faces of people around you, you will, will by extension, be putting a smile or a bigger or better smile on your own face. I am a his at born. So, blessing, Eko yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Thank you so very much Thanks, for being sir. on the program Thank today. You. You're welcome. Yeah.